Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, bringing you the fifth section to chapter 2 in my Castlevania Night Difficulty video walkthrough. And this level is entitled Agatha, which is the place that we've been stumbling onwards towards. And what this level basically is, is running through a load of these ruins and um, killing a couple dudes, you know, doing the usual traversal stuff. It's nice and simple, there's nothing too difficult. You'll notice straight away I'm using my magic to get my life back because that annoying beeping sound was, you know, doing its little fucking serenade. And I'm no fan of that, so that's why that gets done. But um, this level especially is going to be killing a couple of things so that we can climb across some gaps and just um, exploring interesting camera angles. So there's not nothing too much really to talk about strategy wise as per usual I should be grabbing these enemies and killing them instantly but for some reason I still haven't realized that there's no point trying to fight them normally because it isn't fun and it isn't effective so hooray for me finally getting my grab on but instead I'm gonna talk about some other topics because I've got a couple that are rumbling around my brain uh, the first one is entitled to work well, I say entitled, is shall we say dedicated to all my Russian subscribers if I have any, because in truth be told, I'm not really sure. But Russian people, Estonia people, you know, anybody from the you know the former Soviet areas. When you use the internet, um, I assume you have the access to the internet, you know, like China, they don't fucking monetize shit and censor it. When you go onto, you know, any site be it for downloading stuff, or you know, streaming stuff, or watching stuff. Shall we say sites that are a little bit more lucrative out there, not like your YouTubes and stuff that actually have decent pop-up windows. I mean, you know, you know, you slightly shady your sites. Uh, do you get the the pop-ups at the side saying English women wanting you, and then they're like, it has been you know scientifically proven that English women really like Russian boys and like nothing better than to you know stand around in their PJs with their massive titties looking at you all coy. Do you get that because? Every time I go on to various different sites, it's always telling me how fucking eager Russian women are to find me and to hook up with me. Even though they track my, you know, IP address to every fucking site I go to, but they still can't find me somehow. And uh, it's just a little bit annoying because you'll just be, you know, searching for something completely mundane, and then out of the corner of your eye, you see, you know, a perfect pair of cleavage being pouted by some, you know, pink lips and some ridiculously good looking woman who's clearly not from Russia, no offense to any Russian girls, but it's like half of them are just fucking, you know, image grabs off Google of porn stars and stuff and it's just like, yeah, you're totally waiting for me, you kinky Russian. So it just makes me wonder, if anybody's got an answer for it, if you do come from Russia or any of those kind of areas, please send me a message telling me that you get, you know, fucking Peruvian girls are looking for you now. They're really husky and they look like nothing better than a nice length of Russian or something silly like that because it drives me potty to no end. And the second topic I want to discuss is something a little bit more, you know, serious, a little bit less silly, and that is difficulty in video games. And uh, by this, I don't mean, you know, selectable difficulties or anything like that. I just mean uh, when a game has and gone out of its way to being cruel by, you know, inflicting a cruel deadline or a, a cruel guideline to, to restrict the way you play. So that's the the angle of difficulty I'm looking at. And you can think back all the way, you know, to the old days with the NES and the Amiga and all that kind of shit. Even the arcade games where it was like you put your money in, you ran forward, you instantly died, and it was like, fuck you, you died, pay more money. And you, you stood there staring at the sticks wondering what the hell had just happened. And you put your money back in, you ran forward, and the same thing killed you, and you were still none the wiser, and it came up again. Fuck you, buddy, you suck dick, you can't play games. And it was just kind of like, well, that's not very nice. And then, as we've gradually gone on and technology has progressed, and you know, it's become a lot more of a consumer market, games have got a lot easier and a lot less strict and a lot more, you know, viable for anybody to play because the the they're easier, they're, they've got better, you know, guidance for you, they help you, they've got assistance, they've got all sorts of craziness where they go out of their way to take away, you know, the grind of of playing a difficult game. And for the most, this is a good thing. But there is occasional moments in, in good games where you'll come across a restriction that completely takes the enjoyment out of the game and completely fucks you in my eyes. Uh, a good example of this is, is Splinter Cell when it first came out, when it was like, you know, this is Xbox's only game that's worth buying right now. It's going to topple Metal Gear Solid and slap a dick in Siphon Filter's mouth. 
And you know when they were boasting at it being gonna be you could you could do splits across two walls. It's like why would you want to? It makes no sense. And uh, and all the other stuff. And this is not me shitting on Splinter Cell because I've played every game and I like them. It's just the first Splinter Cell. You, you started playing it. You're like, oh, this is awesome. Running around in the shadow. I'm a giant ninja with three you know green light bulbs on me. I don't know if anybody can see them. I can see them, but it makes no sense. It's all cool. I'm in the dark. And you had a lot of fun with it. But as soon as you fucked up, like, don't get spotted, Sam. You've got to do this mission, Sam. I'm a giant black guy, Sam. And it was like, you go into the first level, you'd walk forward, one guy would see you, he'd be like, the mission's over, Sam, you motherfucker, take the disc out now and snap it, you suck, you suck. And it would like, restart checkpoint. And then you'd walk forward again, and you'd kill a dude, you'd start going halfway through the level, and it would be like, someone found a body, Sam, the mission's over, get the fuck out of there, you suck dick. And... And it was really strict, and it, and it got to the point where that game was really hard, especially towards the end, because the restrictions they put on you in the game made it unfun. They made it too challenging, because you could never get seen, you could never do this, you could never do that. It, it was bullshit. And then you look at Splinter Cell Conviction, <laughs> which is a, a progression, you know, onwards of every game. It's gone a little bit more lack, you know, a bit more lapse in its difficulty and its strictness and its guidelines. And then in Conviction, it's like, you walk forward, you kill a dude, Halfway through level, somebody finds him and he comes out across the radio and goes, Sam, they found a body. Here's an M60. Go fuck some shit up. Have fun. And it's a really, really different mindset to what it used to be. And um, that's probably all due to, you know, people's enjoyment and wanting to get higher sales for the games. But the reason I've, I've come up with this, <laughs> this interesting little topic is the fact that um, a lot of games have this and it can all be down to how you play them personally and for instance my my major gripe right now is I'm playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and um, I'm hoping everybody listening has played this game because it'll probably not mean too much to you if you haven't but uh, Assassin's Creed has an achievement for getting 100% sync on every single mission in the game and what that means is, is when you start to do a, a mission objective that's story related or, you know, close to the story, it will come up at the bottom of the screen and it will tell you a little preset that you have to follow in order to get a 100% sync ratio or whatever it's fucking called. And if you don't do it, you'll only get 50 and you'll fuck it up. You can replay these menus, but you can't pause and restart the checkpoint when you fuck it up to go back to before you actually fucked it up. And I'm one of those type of people that if I see an achievement linked to something in a playthrough, I'm going to try and do it the first time. So, the fact that I am trying to 100% sync all these levels on my first run through is detracting from the enjoyment I'm getting from the game. And it's actually making me not enjoy what is, you know, otherwise a fantastic game. And that might just be me and the way I work, but I'm sure there's other people that can concur with this opinion because guidelines like that do change the way you approach a game. Like, for instance, in, in Assassin's Creed, it's like, there's some missions where they will go, uh, you can't take any damage. So, straight away, you're not fighting the way you usually fight. You're not throwing caution to the wind. You're, you're being tentative, you're being counter, you, you know, you, you're waiting people out, you're being a lot more patient. And it's just, it takes away that enjoyment. And I'm probably going to carry on in the, the next video about it, because it's, it's fucked me off to, to no end last night. I, I turned it off. I, I had a right little hissy fit with it. <laughs> but, um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. You take care now.